This is section 5.1. We're going to look at simplifying and evaluating algebraic expressions, something that we've already covered, but now we are going to tie it all together with all the other foundational things that we've built upon. Now, if we recall, this is the foundation of math. This is order of operations, parentheses or any grouping symbol. We have exponents, multiplication and division, addition and subtraction, and they're done in the order of top to bottom, and we work left to right. Multiplication, division don't have to be done in a specific order as long as we work them left to right. Division or multiplication can come first. All right, so if we look at this, this is why order of operations is important. They guide us to come to the correct answer or the correct conclusion. If we look at these, these parentheses, these grouping symbols, are directing me to what's inside of them. If I look here, I have the whole quantity, negative 3. I may not be able to do any operations in there, but it says this whole value will be raised to the power of 2. So what that's telling me is take negative 3 times negative 3, a value times itself. That's what it means to square. And we know that a negative times a negative is a positive. 3 times 3 is 9. I get a positive 9. This one here, well, this is a negative 3 squared. There's no parentheses, so we follow order of operations. We do exponents before addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. So I have to do that exponent first. So essentially what it says is I'm going to have a negative of 3 times 3. And notice I use that word of, a negative of. That means a negative times this value. And because square comes before we multiply. 3 times 3 is 9, negative 9. So times a negative, negative 9. And we see 9 and negative 9 are two different values. They're actually opposite values. And it was only guided by those parentheses. So order of operations is essential. All right, so before we actually begin simplifying or evaluating algebraic expressions, we're going to do a little bit of review. We have to know what a variable is. A variable is just a placeholder of an unknown value that will, maybe we'll know it's a number when we're given uh, something to evaluate. We also have constants. Constants are just numbers that we do know that are not going to change. That's why we call them constant. And terms are the combination of uh, numbers and variables raised to particular powers. The terms is the product of numbers and variables. We'll also see operation symbols. That tells us whether we're going to raise to a power or multiply, divide, add, subtract. We're going to see those in algebraic expressions. And we're also going to see grouping symbols, those parentheses, or maybe even absolute values, things of that nature. So we have to know what these things are. All right, <clears throat> let's, do, let's review uh, our, what our terms are and what their coefficients are. If we look at the first term, the coefficient is defined as just the number in front of the term or the number that's being uh, multiplied by the term, part of the product. So if I look at this first one, 2.3, and we've been introduced to decimals. So we can say, OK, 2.3 or 2 and 3 tenths is my coefficient of this term. When I look at this one, we've seen this before. If there's no coefficient written in front, I have to assume I have 1. There is 1 r there, so its coefficient is 1. What if I have negative x, a negative in front of a variable? Well, just like the r, I assume the coefficient is 1, but this would be a negative 1. So its coefficient is negative 1. Of this term, this term is a constant. It's 5. Well, that is its coefficient. Its coefficient is the number that I have. Now, these can be a little tricky because we have division here. But we can think of this in the same way we thought of this or this. It is a 1 in front of there. Now we look at all the numbers of this single term. We have 1 over 6. Well, that's a number in itself. That's a rational number, 1 sixth. Same thing if we have a negative. I can look at this variable and say, well, there's a 1 there. I can imagine a 1 there. 1 over 4, well, it's a negative 1 over 4 or a negative 1 fourth. So hopefully we were comfortable with determining coefficients. The other thing we have to determine is like terms. 
In order for a term to be like, it has to have the same variables. And each respective variable has to be raised to the same power. So let's look at the first example. They both have an x and a y. The x is squared. This x is squared. The y is to the first power. This y is to the first power. So these would be like terms. They each have an x squared, and they each have a y to the first power. So they are like terms. Let's look at the next one. We have xy and xy squared. They both have the same variables, but this one is squared and this one isn't. So one of my y's isn't squared. They are not like terms. They have to have the same variable and the same power for that variable. The next one, we have a, b, and c. We have a, b, and c. So they have the same variables, but their powers, we have to be very careful. a and a are to the first. That's OK. b is to the first. This b is to the second. That tells me right there they're not like terms. Well, this one's squared and this one isn't. So that also tells me they're not like terms. So these are not like terms. If we look at these, these are just numbers, negative 5 and 4. Well, numbers are just constants. Constants are like terms. There is no variable for each of them. So that variable is raised to the same power. There isn't one. So we can say negative 5 and 4 are like terms. They're just numbers. Now, here's where we have to be careful. And sometimes we have to go back and identify the terms. The term of this, or excuse me, the coefficient. The coefficient of this one would be 1 7th. And the coefficient of this is 2. Now that we've identified the coefficient, let's look at the variable. This variable is x to the first power. This one is also x to the first power. So even though they may look different, these are like terms. And this is one that we've seen before in a previous section. We have 9rs and 10sr. If I identify what my variables are, I have an r and an s. And here I have an s and an r. So they each have an r and they each have an s. They are all to the first power. So I know that, yes, these are like terms. Just because their order isn't the same doesn't mean that they're not like terms. These are like terms because multiplication is commutative. If I have 2 times 3, well, that's the same thing as 3 times 2. The order doesn't matter as long as they are the same variables to the same power. So these are like terms. All right, let's move on to actually evaluating an expression. When we evaluate expressions, we're given the values. We follow order of operations. And that's why we touched on that at the beginning of the video. But by this point in the class, you should be very comfortable with order of operations. Evaluate if x equals 4 and y equals 6. This is what I call plug and chug. For the x, I'm going to put in the given x value. So I use parentheses. For the y, I'm going to put in the given y value. And I use parentheses. And now I can do the math, but I follow order of operations. I see what operations I have. I have multiplication and addition. I do the multiplication first. 5 times 4 is 20. 2 times 6 is 12. And I am adding those values. So now that I've done the multiplication, I can now do that addition. 20 and 12 is 32. Sometimes we'll be working with variables. And we'll want to simplify an expression. And it might have parentheses. Well, I know order of operations says deal with parentheses first. Well, if I don't know what these values are in here, I can't do the math inside of that parentheses. But I can use the distributive property to eliminate it if there's multiplication adjacent to it. And what that is is a times b, a times c. I just distribute the multiplication to each value within there. And by doing so, I get a times b plus a times c. These are equivalent. And it also applies to subtraction. a times b, this negative belongs to that term. a times negative c. And that would give me a times b minus ac. That negative belongs to that term. Keep that in mind. All right, let's actually start evaluate, or uh, excuse me, simplifying some expressions. Well, the first thing we want to do is we want to say, is there anything that I can simplify? Is there any parentheses? Because that's where we start in order of operations. In this example, no. We have some exponents, but I have variables. I can't do anything with the variable. So then I move on. Any multiplication or division, not that I can do. 
Addition or subtraction. I see lots of addition or subtraction. But before I can do that, I have to identify the like terms. So I see here I have an x squared. And I look throughout the problem to see if there's any other x squareds. And I do see this right here. So these are like terms. I can combine like terms. Negative 1.5 of these x's squared and 2.5 of these x's squared. If I combine them, they have different signs. I find their difference. And they differ by 1. The larger value is positive. So I have 1 of these x's squared. Now, is it necessary that we put the 1 there? No, we assume 1 if we have the variable. I have at least an x squared, which is 1x squared. And then I look at 3 and 4x. Well, those are not like terms, so I'm just going to write them in descending order of their variables. This is to the first power, and this is to no power. It has no variable. So x squared plus 4x plus 3, a lot nicer than what we had to begin with. So we've simplified it. If we look at this example, here's where we can apply that distributive property. Because if I don't know what a and b are, I can't subtract 4 times the b value. So I have to move on from there. And I see I have 5 times this entire quantity. Here's where I can use the distributive property. 5 times a and 5 times a negative 4b. That negative belongs to that term. So 5 times a negative 4 is negative 20 times b. Same thing here. I have parentheses, and I have multiplication outside of it by adjacencies. This negative belongs to that number. So when I distribute it, I'm going to use that whole value. Negative 2 times a would be negative 2a. And negative 2 times a negative b, this sign belongs to that number. A negative times a negative is a positive 2b. Be careful with those signs. Now that I was able to eliminate the parentheses, now I can, I'm going to check to see, do I have any like terms? Well, I have an a term, and I have a, another a term. Both are to the first power, so they're like terms. Five of these a's minus two of these a's gives me three of these a's. Now I have negative 2b and positive 2b. I notice that I have different signs, and they are like terms. So I'm going to find their difference. Different signs find their difference. The difference of 20 and 2 is 18. The larger value is negative. And it has that variable of b. So we get 3a minus 18b, a lot nicer of an expression than what we started with. All right, <clears throat> let's look at the next example. It seems simple enough because I only have two terms. But this one can be somewhat troublesome. The first thing I'm going to do is identify the coefficients. I see this one is actually, I can imagine that 1 in front of that x. So I have 1 over 2. Well, 1 over 2 is 1 half of these x minus 2x. That might help me identify if they're like terms or not. I see this is x to the first power. That's x to the first power. Now I can combine them. Well, if I combine them, 1 half minus 2, I have a fraction minus a number. In order to add or subtract with fractions, they have to have a common denominator. So I'm going to change this 2 to have a denominator of 2. I'm going to do it over here. If I want 2 to have a denominator of 2, I'm going to multiply it by 2 over 2, thinking of the 2 as 2 over 1, right? 2 times 2 is 4 over 1 times 2 is 2. So this would be 4 halves. This negative belongs to that. So it's negative 4 halves x. And this is x. So that was a lot of work. And we have yet to actually simplify anything. But at least we've identified the coefficients. And now we're ready to do any simplif simplification uh, that's available. So since they are like terms, x and x, I can have 1 half minus 4 halves. Well, they have the same denominator. 1 minus 4 is negative 3 over 2x. And you can write it this way, or you could write it this way. Either way, it doesn't matter. Both of these are correct. They're equal. All right. What I want you to do for practice is attempt this one on your own. We can see we have parentheses. We have some fractions. So we're going to have to take our time. We see some negative signs. Careful with those signs when you're distributing. And uh, good luck. Thank you for watching.